This is Network Africa on Channel Television. Coming up on the program, violence continues to trail the upcoming elections in Zambia, but the president insists the results will be respected. Then, is the United Kingdom actually granting visa-free entry into the UK for Commonwealth countries? Find out in a bit. And later, we take a look at how things are going in South Africa one week after the local elections. Thank you very much for making out time to join us on Network Africa, reaching you live from Channels Television. I'm Cynthia Are. Last week, all eyes were on South Africa, where local elections took place. But this week, it's all about Zambia, where violence continues to trail the Thursday elections. Regardless of the situation, President Edgar Lungu says the results will be respected. <laughs> Zambia's main opposition leader has accused the government of using repressive laws to restrict his election campaign, saying violence by supporters of the ruling Patriotic Front would prevent polls from being free and fair. Zambia holds presidential and parliamentary elections on Thursday, August the 11th. President Edgar Lungu faces a strong challenge from opposition leader Hakainde Ichilema after last year's neck-and-neck -neck race. Hichilema, one of Zambia's wealthiest businessmen and known locally as HH, accused the president of cancelling two of his rallies in the eastern province. Zambia's Electoral Commission on July the 9th suspended campaigning for 10 days in two areas, including the capital Lusaka, due to escalating political violence. August, we are winning. The violence that is obtained in the country does not lend the conditions suitable for a free, fair, credible election. The conduct of the Electoral Commission where they're moving election materials in the night without stakeholders. That's unacceptable. We need a free, fair, transparent and credible election. And the UPN is winning this election. Lungu knows that. That's why he's panicking. That's why he's behaving in a brutal way. Lungu has been in power in the Southern African nation since winning election in January 2015, following the death of his predecessor Michael Sata in October 2014. Hichilema has warned his supporters not to be intimidated and to turn out in large numbers, saying it is still possible to win the elections. Just to tell President Lung to provide leadership, to end violence in our country, to allow conditions to prevail that to allow for free, fair, transparent, credible elections. It's a minimum. It's a bare minimum. That's have to have free and fair elections, because if we won't have free and fair elections in this country, things, things will turn out very badly. It doesn't matter, even if the elections or the campaign wasn't free and fair. But the bottom line is that HH is winning. The leader of the African Union Observer Mission, former Nigerian President Goodluck Jonathan, says violence has decreased following the tender suspension of campaigning. He says both the ruling party and the opposition have accused each other of violence. It's normal in Africa because we are just practicing democracy for opposition parties to always feel that the ruling party will use all the state resources and power because they control the security, they control the public media and others to create an environment that is not too good for them. But from, what, from the report we got from our long-term observers, yes, these fears are there. Yes, there are certain incidences that point to that, but we still believe that uh, the elections can still be conducted in a manner that to be satisfactory. Accept any result because of the interests of the people. You cannot cause violence and cause mayhem, kill people, destroy uh, properties, frustrate businesses, collapse the economy of nations because of your personal interest. That is our own advice. Zambia is Africa's second biggest copper producer, but has struggled with a weakening currency that has lost about 20% since April. Well, joining us from Abuja, Nigeria's federal capital territory, is political analyst and expert George Agen. George, thank you very much for joining us on Network Pleasure Africa. To be with you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Now, Zambia has had 
relatively smooth power transitions since 1964. Why do you think this case is different? Well, naturally, we all hope that they will continue the trend that it's had of peaceful transitions. Uh, but, you know, the opposition is in a very tough fight. As we know, the previous election after the death of President Sartre was a very, very closely fought election. I think it was less than 27,000 votes in a nation of millions that decided. And so Lungu's um, incumbency and his administration has a lot to lose. And so therefore, the opposition is worried that they're going to pull out all the stops and that violence may be used as a tool to repress votes. Already, there have been re reports that they shut down media and they've, as your report mentioned, uh, closed down rallies and have made it difficult for the opposition to campaign. Of course, these are, these are not unfamiliar uh, events in African elections. Um, I don't suspect that there's a risk of major violence, but there may be a particular areas, a stronghold of the opposition, where they, they may attempt to suppress the vote by using violence. So, you know, we, we naturally hope, as, as a former president could look, uh, Jonathan said, that this does not to derail the overall democratic process. Well, well, George, if we choose to go by mandates, you know, we see that President... Um, um, sitting President Edgar Lungu promises stability and continuity while his main challenger of the United Party is promising to fix a broken economy. Which do you think the electorate might lean towards a bit more? Well, I mean, this is a classic um, campaign struggle. You have the incumbent saying, give us more time to continue the good work that we've done, and, and that's shown by their slogan, uh, which is, you know, look at what we've done. Whereas the opposition says we need change, you know, there are problems, and their, their slogan is HH, which is Hakim uh, de will fix it, HH will fix it. So this is a classic, you know, incumbent saying, give us more time, we've done good work, we will continue on your behalf to fight for you. And the opposition saying, it's not good enough, we need change, we'll fix the problems. Um, it, it comes down to who's run a more clever campaign and who's been better at getting their message out to those independent voters. If you go to the Facebook pages of either of these uh, candidates, you'll see the same typical African campaign. It looks very familiar to your Nigerian audience, uh, very familiar to all of us who watch your program who are familiar with affairs in Africa. Big rallies, kissing the rings of chieftains, that sort of thing. What's, what's really um, going to decide the election? and will continue to decide elections more and more as we move on, and particularly in developing countries like Africa, is the ability to reach that growing segment of the population that's using social media, that's alert to what's happening, that's listening uh, with, with a critical ear, and is not just following their tribe, their family, um, their elders in deciding how to vote. And so the, the campaign that's done a better job of promoting uh, their solutions, and particularly what they want to do in filling, out, filling in the gaps of behind their slogan, will probably be the one that carries it there. Well, George, going by what former Nigerian President Dr. Guluk Jonathan had to say, urging the electorate to accept Thursday's results, that's this coming Thursday, and, you know, move on. Some analysts actually suggest that what this means is that the results might not necessarily reflect the stance of the majority of the electorate. Do you share that view? Well, if, if, the, if the rightful winner of the election is declared, then it's natural to say to those who lost, move on because you, you haven't won the election. If, however, there are suspicions that the vote was rigged or that there was foul play or that the vote was suppressed, um, then naturally the opposition will say, well, this doesn't re naturally reflect what the real situation of the country is and they don't have a true mandate. And again, this is a very, very familiar story. Um, you know, we saw this um, in Ghana in the past two elections in which the opposition felt that um, they, they were robbed of a victory. Um, you know, they went through a peaceful means to try to undo that, you know, unsuccessfully. In other countries, there have been, you know, open uh, revolt. Look at Burundi, for example. Um, you know, to this day, they don't have, uh, the, the government still fighting, uh, an opposition is still, you know, marginalized internationally. So, you know, the question is, does the opposition have a case, and are they going to be able to prove on, after Election Day that there was, in fact, some kind of rigging, or was this just, you know, a typical cry of the opposition, as, again, we've seen many times before, where the opposition says, well, we didn't win, but that's because it was, it was not really free and fair. Um, you know, we'll have to see what the results of the election are. Don't forget, this is also a runoff election, and there are nine candidates in the race. So if those other seven candidates can, can corral together enough of the vote to force a second round, because neither uh, Hishilema nor Lungu gets 50%, then we're going to go through uh, another few weeks of, uh, of campaign. Well, George Agent, political analyst, thank you so much for joining us on Network Africa. We appreciate your time. So to come on Network Africa, is the United Kingdom actually granting visa-free entry into the UK for Commonwealth countries? 
Find out in a bit.